Welcome to a tutorial for the Healthy People 2030 Trend Analysis Tool. Setting 10-year objective targets has been an essential part of Healthy People for five decades since its launch in 1979. The targets are set by topic area workgroups made up of subject matter experts. Healthy People targets reflect subject matter, policy, and political considerations, and so are not strictly statistical constructs. To find the Trend Analysis Tool, Go to the NCHS Healthy People homepage at cdc.gov slash nchs slash healthy underscore people. On the left side of the page, click the plus sign next to Healthy People 2030 to expand the list for that section. Then click Target Setting. On the Target Setting page, you will find the Trend Analysis tool. This video provides instructions for using that tool. Now, let's explore how to use the Trend Analysis tool. You can access the tool by clicking on the Trend Analysis Tool link. This will open the Microsoft Excel Spreadsheet-based tool. The tool's first sheet provides details on the background of the tool and instructions for how to use it. The Trend Analysis Tool uses historical data to fit trend lines using weighted least squares. You can set targets using trend projection when historical data are available with at least three data points. If you have questions about what information goes into the tool, refer to this first sheet. Now, let's move on to the tool, which is located on the second sheet of the spreadsheet. This sheet outlines a four-step process. First, entering your historical data and projection years. Second, entering your descriptive data. Third, reviewing the trend chart. And fourth, reviewing candidate values. The first step is to enter the years for your historical data up through the year you would like to project. For example, if you have data from 2010 through 2019, you will input those years. Then, you will add the year for which you would like to project the target, say 2029. You can choose a given year, like we just did, or if you have data for a year range, you can add year ranges, such as 2014 to 2016. Be sure to use the formatting described in the row label. The next row will auto-populate based on what you input for the years. Next, you will add your estimates. If there are years with no data, enter an asterisk in the cell. You can see that we've done that for 2014 in the example on the screen. It is important to ensure that the cells that don't have data are filled with asterisks because blank cells are not supported in this tool. After entering your estimates, add standard errors if you have them. Again. Note that we inserted an asterisk for 2014 in the example because no data were available for that year. Now that step one is complete, let's move on to step two, where you enter your descriptive data. Start by specifying whether the unit of measurement is a percent or other unit. In the example you see, the data are percentages. When we select percent, the tool removes any target candidates that are above 100% or below 0%. Next. Pick the desired direction, either increase or decrease. The desired direction for this example is to increase. This can help eliminate unrealistic or undesirable target candidates and targets in the wrong direction. Then, select the projection year for which the tool should calculate target values. In this example, the projection year is 2029. You can also see that there are asterisks for years after 2029. If you would like to project further into the future, you can add additional projection years in step one. Once you have your projection year, select your baseline year, which is usually the last year for which you have available data. For this example, 2019 is our baseline year. Lastly, select the least squares fit method. We recommend using weighted least squares when standard errors are available. Ordinary least squares should be selected when standard errors are not available. Because this example includes standard errors, we have selected weighted least squares. Once step two is complete, the trend chart and candidate target values will display. Step three is to review the trend chart and any potential target values. To make the chart easier to read, you can remove any NA values. To do this, right-click the x-axis of the chart and select Format Axis. Then click Axis Options and select Date Axis under the Axis type. You can see that the chart plots the estimates, fitted least squares line and projection, and various prediction intervals. Additionally, the baseline is projected out to your projection year for your reference. 
Now that we've reviewed the chart, let's move on to step four and select a target. Start by looking at the candidate values in the table. You can see that there are six one-sided prediction intervals for the desired target year with the 50% one-sided prediction interval corresponding to the projection. These prediction intervals range from a 10% chance that the chosen target year will meet or exceed the target percent to a 90% chance that the chosen target year will meet or exceed the target percent. In our example, there is a 10% chance that the 2029 value will meet or exceed 67% while there is a 90% chance that the 2029 value will meet or exceed 56.6%. However, you can see that three of the proposed targets do not improve from the baseline. In addition, another of the proposed targets is not statistically significant improvement from the baseline. Warnings will also appear if a proposed target is less than zero or more than 100%. If you entered standard error values, the minimally statistically significant improvement from the baseline using the 0.05 level of significance will appear in the box below the target candidate values. Additionally, reviewing the slope of the trend line can help you make a more informed decision. Check to see if the slope is in the right direction and if it is statistically significant based on a 0.05 level of significance. In some cases, the trend analysis tool may not identify any suitable candidate target values. In other cases, the trend may not be in the desired direction. If this happens, consider other target setting methods like percent improvement, minimal statistical significance, or baseline maintenance. Percent improvement and minimal statistical significance methods are covered in our percent improvement and minimal statistical significance video tutorial. On the last two sheets of the tool, we will provide some additional examples. Sheet three shows an example for single data years without standard errors. And sheet four shows data with year ranges and standard errors. You can learn more about the tools and methods used for Healthy People 2030 in our publication, Target Setting Methods in Healthy People 2030, which can be found on the NCHS website at cdc.gov slash nchs slash products slash hp underscore pubs dot htm. Although national targets for Healthy People 2030 have already been set for this decade, these tools and methods can be useful to others interested in developing targets or other goals for health indicators for states, localities, and specific populations. Thank you for watching this tutorial from the National Center for Health Statistics.